Hey guys, my name is Ross Johnston, and I had a vision where I saw California split in half. Now, before I get there, I want to share a little bit of my story, and it actually starts on day one because I was born by artificial insemination. And the reason for that is my mom was living a lesbian lifestyle, and since she was a young girl, she had always had this desire to have children. And so in her mid-30s, she opened up a phone book, and when she opened that phone book up, she found a laboratory, walked in, and said, I want to have a child. They laid a list of about 10 donors in front of her. She picked one, and nine months later, here I was. And from about zero to 15 years old in my life, thankfully nothing really traumatic happened, but I remember at 15, a friend invited me to church, and I decided to go. Now keep in mind, this was the first time I'd ever been to church. I had never heard a worship song, a sermon, I had zero grid for God. And I remember as I sat in the back row at that Sunday service, I encountered the presence of God for the first time in my life. I went home that night, and as I look back on that 12 to 13 years ago, really what I was saying is this, God, please don't let me be a good person who reads a good book and goes to a good church. God, if you are real, I want to meet you. And sure enough, night after night in my room, I would encounter the presence of Jesus. And the next time I went to church, I lifted my hand and I surrendered my life to Jesus. Now, after that moment, I graduated high school, I went to college, and once again, nothing traumatic happened, which I'm so grateful for. But in 2016, I remember I decided that it was time for me to actually take life on. And I was trying to figure out my identity, my call, and what God was ultimately saying over my life. And for the next three and a half years, I decided to walk out of intimacy with God. Why? Because I didn't have the car I wanted, I didn't have the girlfriend I wanted, I didn't have the house I wanted, and I started playing the blame game with God. And after those three and a half years, I was at the lowest point in my life, and then 2020 comes. Now in 2020, it was a very intense, chaotic, and dark moment of history on the earth. But I remember in that moment, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and He said this. He said, Ross, if you do not stand now, you never will. I repented, I was on my knees, I was weeping, I was crying. So many of us have had these encounters and moments with God. And I remember in that moment, I said, God, if you want me to live for you, you have to give me my people. Find your people, find your purpose. And long story short, I walked into a tent revival one night, I saw a worship leader on stage, and the Lord told me, you need to connect with him. We become amazing friends, and in that moment, we decided that it was time for revival in California. I like to say it like this, revival is not man waiting on God, it's God waiting on man. And so we showed up at Huntington Beach, an iconic place in California, 300 people show up, and all of a sudden we worship, we preach the gospel, we do baptisms in the ocean, and it was an incredible moment where we believe that God began to open up the wells of revival in California. But not only that, a year later, as I was in my room, I had this vision. And in this vision, I saw the state of California on a map. Half of it was red, half of it was blue. Now in the dream, I knew it wasn't political, but I started asking God, what does this mean? And all of a sudden, as I started asking God what this dream, what this vision meant, I began to have this thought. And here's the thought. The thought was this, that the color red and their color blue together make the color purple. What does purple signify? It signifies glory, it signifies majesty, and it signifies royalty. And not only that, as we came to 2024, I immediately when I saw that year, I saw Psalm 24 flash in front of my eyes. I knew God was speaking that the only hope for America, the only hope for the nations of the earth is one thing, His glory, His presence, when His manifest presence touches the earth, nothing else matters. Every person focuses on Jesus, every denomination falls, every preference falls, and all we can do is look at this man named Jesus and say, He deserves every aspect of our lives. But here's the deal. As I started thinking about this dream and the glory of God becoming a reality, my heart's cry was this, God, I believe this dream, I believe this vision, but I want to see it with my own eyes. I want to see it with my own hands. I honor the saints and the revivalists of past, but I don't just want to hear the stories and read the stories. I want to be a part of the stories. And in 2022, we decided to do an event in San Francisco in the Tenderloin District. Now to give you some context, the Tenderloin District is almost like a third world country. For a couple miles 
mile radius. There's thousands of homeless people. There's drug needles on the floor. And it's a place where not many people would go. But here's what we know that Jesus loves everyone and Jesus wants every person to be saved. And so as we show up and we're doing this gathering, we begin to worship, we preach the gospel, we do, we do baptisms, and it was an incredible night. But then this story, this testimony comes to me at the end of the night. Here's what happened. There was a couple, a man and a woman, and they were literally walking on their way to a satanic ritual. They heard worship, they stopped, and when they stopped, a team member decided to go up to them and began to minister to them. And here's what happened. The lady opened up that she actually was in a car accident and had severe back pain and back problems. The lady then receives prayer, her back gets healed, and they decide to stay a little bit longer. Well, guess what happens next? They stay after worship, they hear the gospel, and I remember as I'm preaching the gospel, I saw this couple, and they were the first couple to respond to the gospel. What an incredible moment. But here's another story proving that the glory of God is the only solution for America and the nations of the earth. We were in downtown San Diego on Halloween. Now during this moment of Halloween, there's partying, there's costumes, there's wildness, there's all these things happening in the atmosphere. And as we gathered, a couple hundred people gathered on a street corner in front of the most famous and wild bar in San Diego. And as we're standing there worshiping and preaching the gospel, I give an altar call for salvation. I look to my left, I look to my right, and nobody is seeming to respond. And then out of nowhere, after about 10 to 15 seconds, I see a transgender man actually walks up to the altar to give his life to Jesus. My response is this, I ran up to him, I give him a hug, and immediately in that moment, he begins to weep, he begins to cry, and he actually stayed at the gathering for the rest of the time we were there worshiping Jesus. Here's what I'm trying to say. The manifest presence of God, his glory, his beauty, his royalty, when the world begins to recognize it, when the world comes to, comes to an encounter with Jesus, everything is flipped around in an instant. Let me say it like this. All it takes is one moment, one ounce of the presence of God for the person who's in the kingdom of darkness to be transferred to the kingdom of light. I wanna encourage you that this dream that I saw for California is not only for the Golden State, but for every believer that will partner with the will of God. Jesus said it like this. May your kingdom come and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know that right now in heaven, the fullness of God's glory is manifest. And I believe in this season, in this hour, in this next great move of God, in this next revival, that God wants to pour out His Spirit, His presence, and a glory in a way that maybe we have never experienced before. And here's the last thing I want to do. Before we go, I want to pray for you. I believe in impartation, and I believe that as I begin to pray, wherever you may be, that God's presence and God's glory will touch your life, will touch your family, will touch your business, will touch your circumstances, because here's what I know. God wants to flip it all around in a single moment and in a single instant. So if you can, would you lift your hands, would you open your hands, or just open your heart up in a posture to receive. And so, Father, I pray for every single person watching and listening right now that your glory would become manifest in their lives. Father, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit, pour out your Spirit in such a measure that we couldn't resist. God, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. But God, we desire your manifest presence to become the greatest reality of our lives. And just like that dream, God, if there's any division, if there's any struggle, if there's any circumstance in the way in our life or in our family, we declare that your glory in your presence are the solution. So spirit of wisdom and revelation, would you reveal Jesus right now in a fresh manner? Would you reveal the Father? Would we see the royalty, the majesty, the beauty of this King, the King of kings and the Lord of lords? And so Holy Spirit, we come right now and we just ask for a fresh encounter with the face of God, a fresh encounter with the hand of God and a fresh encounter with the heart of God. Jesus, your presence is the only solution. It is revival or bust. And I just declare the spirit of revival to touch your life. That would take you from your neighborhood to the nations. That it's transferred you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his son. And I bless you in Jesus' name.